is Ijoma Dikto Kulye, and I am super excited to be here this afternoon. Welcome, Seawin Africa. Welcome to everybody who is a part of today's event. This is the third day of the Young and More Africa Convention. Please, if you can hear me and you can see me, and drop a comment section while we await our next guest to be on board. So I will just be playing up the up next video for our next guest. Please, if you are live and you can hear me, you can see me, please drop a comment so that we can get started. Okay, I can see a good number of persons. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Samuel. How are you all doing? Please, if you can hear me and you can see me perfectly clearly and you are ready for today's session, drop a comment there. Let's get started. So we'll be playing the speakers by right away so that you can get on board and so he can come on board. And of course, you can share with us all the value that he has for us today. There are lots for us today. You should not miss any session today, guys. Do not miss any session today. Of course, you know that the people are going to be speaking today. Um, Fee Steven Michael, Elisha Maman, uh, myself, the host, and of course the convener, and of course John Obidi. So do not miss any session today. Today promises to be the exciting of all. I know you all have been excited with Friday session, Saturday session. Today we're going to be bringing it on a bigger level, and of course, in a stage where you will begin to wonder where have you been all this while. So guys, it is. Today, the final lap, do not miss any session. So we're going to be playing the speaker's bio right away so that he can come on board. Okay. All right, guys. Okay, I can see a good number of persons. Hello, Hukamaka. Hello, Porsibu. Hello, Ibengo. Okay, a good number of persons are joining live. Beautiful. So we're going to be playing um, the bio for Fee TV, and he's going to be coming live right away. As a Google Certified Digital Marketer, File Steven helps brands within and outside Africa build digital assets, strategies, and marketing campaigns for peak profitability. This way, he leaves out his passion to enable African businesses maximize digital tools and platforms. Fi is one of the few Facebook Certified Digital Marketing Associates in West Africa. He is also a Certified Social Media Marketing Strategist by HoopSpot Academy. Fi is a Certified British Project Management Professional BPMP 1 and 2. Over the last 12 months, he has trained over 2,000 people on digital marketing, digital product creation, branding and digital productivity. He is an alumnus of digital entrepreneurship from the Facebook Nigeria-sponsored Faith Foundation AEP program. He is also an alumnus of entrepreneurship and business finance from Kaduna Business School, a beneficiary of the Facebook Developer Circles Scholarship and the Udacity Mobile Web Specialist Scholarship. In May 2020, he continued his growth journey as a beneficiary of the Harvard Business School Online Scholarship. Phi identifies with the 8th Sustainable Development Goal of the United Nations to create decent work and economic growth. He is mentored by Elisha Maman, a John C. Maxwell Certified Leadership Coach with years of experience in transformational leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Phi Steven. Okay, so we have Faye Steven on the board and he's going to be sharing with us how to position ourselves perfectly well, profitably, and of course, in order to attain global relevance using apps and platforms. Of course, you know, Steven is not just anybody you're going to listen to and you start asking yourself, well, is somebody you're going to listen to and the value you're going to live with today is going to be amazing. So, Steven, you have the platform right away. We are waiting to share for you to share with us how you can become profitable and, of course, dominate the global space using digital apps and platforms. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Victor. It's amazing to be here. It's amazing to be here. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is an amazing Sunday. Another wonderful day to get value, practical, amazing value that can, you know, help you do exactly what the theme of this convention is, to negotiate for 
global dominance. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Dicta for this opportunity to share. It's always um, an honor for me to get to share with people how to you know become better, how to use data sources better, how to grow and become extremely more profitable. If you're live with me, there are many of you right there. Uh, just go ahead and drop a comment. If you're ready for this session, go ahead and write, I am ready in the comment box. See, you need to, you need to be at a point where you are not distracted because your solution can be at any point in the next 45 minutes. Did you get that? Your solution can be at any point within the next 45 minutes. So go ahead and write, I am ready in the comment box while we get started. Now, my topic for today is how to position your brand profitably using digital tools. Okay, I can see your comments. I can see um, Jamaka. I can see Osafo. I can see Vivier. I can see John Remigio. It's great to have you here. I can see Maureen, Deji. Amazing. I am ready. I, am ready. I can see your comments. I am ready. Now, if you're ready, I am ready too. So how to position your brand profitably using digital tools and platforms? How to position your brand profitably using digital tools and platforms. Now, the first thing that is important to take note of if you are going to really get value from this session is the fact that every positioning is a function of knowledge. Did you get that? Every positioning is a function of knowledge. That means any position you're at at the moment or any position you will get to depends entirely on what you know. Every positioning is a function of knowledge. Let's, let's take an example. Um, how many of you watch football here, yeah, for example? I don't really watch it that much, but I just have an idea, okay? But if you watch football here, yeah, let, let me know. Let, you can just comment with the name of the club you're fanning, <laughs> if I should use that word. Okay, the club that you're a fan of. Okay, how you watch football here? Yeah, do you know that it's possible that someone can be an excellent striker, but if you put that same person as a goalkeeper, the person will perform excellently poor <laughs> if i should describe that that way the person is great in strike in fact there is no match he has played that he won't score at least one or two goals but carry that person <laughs> give me an example should i use messi or Sir ronaldo now let me see the fans of messi or Sir ronaldo now let's say you take Sir ronaldo from his striking position and take him to the goal to the post and say please be a goalkeeper for us we, we, we've seen that you're very passionate about soccer you know, you, you play this ball with so much so much excellence. We love what you do. Please, today, just come and be our goalkeeper. Do you know that Sir Ronaldo, as awesome as he is, will be terrible as a goalkeeper? Do you know why? His position depends on his knowledge, depends on what he knows how to do. So the first thing is every positioning, every positioning is a function of knowledge. That means... Your current position right now is a function of what you know. And if you are going to negotiate for global dominion or global dominance, rather, you have to get to that point where you can allow yourself to be both half full and half empty. What do I mean? You can allow yourself to not just get to know more things, but do not ignore what you have. How many of you have heard that glass half full or half empty scenario? So you are half full because there's something you already know. You are half empty because there are some things you still need to go. Because every positioning is a function of knowledge. That's the first thing. Now, what do you need to know to really position yourself in a way that you can really negotiate for global dominance? That's what I'll be sharing today. What do you need to know? What are the things you need to put into consideration? The tools, the platforms you need to know for you to get to a point where you can say, I am negotiating for global dominance, okay? Are we ready for that? Are we ready for that? Now, um, you know, my, my topic talks about digital tools and platforms, and I just want to say something about platforms very quickly. You know, platforms, platforms are the cheapest opportunities you will ever have to grow. Platforms are the cheapest opportunities you will have or you have right now to grow. If you are ready to grow, associate yourself and actively, actively be a part of a platform. Any platform already existing. Any platform already existing. See, sometimes a bank can be your own platform. There's some people that because they were bankers once, they got a platform to grow. For some people, it can be an association with an online platform. 
For example, Zikta is, is one of the excellent admins of Head Start Africa. Now, that is a platform for her. I'm the team lead of the Winning Mindset by Elisha Mama, my mentor. That, is, that has been one of the secrets of my growth. It's a platform for me. See, if you are not growing and you want to enforce your growth, one way you can do that is to identify a platform, associate yourself with it, and contribute actively to it. I'm talking about positioning your brand now, step by step. Just follow me, follow me. If you're following, just write, I am following the comment box. I am following the comment box, right? Now, very quickly, because of time, okay, let's talk about the things you need to do, the information you need to have, okay? The knowledge. Remember I said every position is a function of knowledge. Every positioning is a function of knowledge. Your current position is a function of what you know. So what are those things that you need to know right now that we allow you to negotiate for global, global dominance. What are those things? Now, I'll talk about some of them. The first one, the first thing you need to do, the first thing you need to do from now, if you are ready to really negotiate for global dominance, the first thing you need to do is what is called structures. Structures. Someone should write that for me. Structures. And, you know, before I talk about structures, if you're live right now and you know there's someone else that you want to benefit from this session, if you want someone to come and thank you after this session, Take a screenshot of what's happening right now. Go to your status, invite people, send the links out. Be the reason why someone is benefiting from today's session. After this session, I'm sure they will thank you because I'm not going deep into it now. So you can do that right now for your friends, for those in your circle. Invite your friends to come right now and join in while we continue. So the first thing you need to set up for yourself is what is called structures. Structures. Okay? Now, it's important to know this. If you ignore structure in your positioning, if you ignore structure in your positioning, even if you rise up, you will not stay up. Do you get that? If you ignore structure in your positioning, even if you rise up, you will not stay up. It's just like you trying to, because you want to fly, right? You're building an aircraft that can fly. But because you want to be fast about it, you will end up building something that is not airworthy. That aircraft may be able to lift itself up, but you can never, ever stay up to the point you're supposed to be. It will come crashing down. You know, there's this, there's this, um, I think I'll just say this very quickly, I'm um, sure from Zikta. There's this part of the scripture that says something about, you know, um, hearing the word and doing it and describing those people to be like someone that builds a house on rock. See, you, he's talking about a structure, a structure that is called on rock. That means when a storm comes, not if a storm comes, when the storm comes, what happens? The storm hits the house, but because of, is it because of the fineness of the house? No. Is it because of the visibility? No. Because of the structure of that house, the house stands. If you build on sand, you don't need a prophet to tell you that when the storm comes, it will come down. So if you ignore structure while positioning, when you want to position yourself, when you want to position yourself, when you want to negotiate for global dominance, if you ignore your structure, you may rise up. You may get one or two deals. You may appear on flyers if that's your thing. You may have this and have that. But if your structure is not good, you can never, ever stay sustainably up. Are you getting value so far? So what structures do you need to have? What especially digital structures now do you need to have, right? For you to really negotiate for dominance. What structures? Two of them, three things. Number one, the first set of structures you need to have, okay, that I'll talk about is, and I won't go deep into the first two, but I'll go deep into the last one because that's my topic. The first structure you need to have if you want to negotiate for global dominance is what I call the personal development structure. Did you get that? Someone should write that down for me. The personal development structure. You need to get to that point where you have a, for your own self, not for any other person, not for your mentor, for the person motivating you, no, not for that. For your own self, you need to get to that point where you have a structure for your personal development. What do I mean? I mean that you should have a structure for two things. Number one, a structure for getting information, a structure for getting information. That's the first one. Number two, a structure for getting exposure and experience. These are the two things that form your personal development. The first one is what? A structure for getting information and a structure for getting what? Exposure and experience. That's your personal development structure. I'll leave that aside. I'm not going deep into that. That's not my topic. 
Now, the second structure you must have to really get to the point where you can negotiate for global dom dominance, right, is what I call the relationship structure. See, if you missed out on any of these structures I'm talking about, something will be lacking. You'll find out that you're doing so much, but you're getting so little. Not because you're a bad person, but because there's something you're ignoring. The relationship structure. And what do I mean by relationship? There are three relationships that you must have in good proportions to really negotiate for dominance. Okay, three relationships. I won't go deep into any of them. The first one is the relationship with God. I'm not going deep into that. Your relationship with men, and by men, I mean people above you, your mentors, people at your level, your peers, and people below you, those that you're giving to. So relationship with God, relationship with men, and the last one is relationship with principles. It is these relationships that make you anything that you will become. So even if your personal development structure is good, without a relationship, you cannot really execute. There are people that are good, but that they are not relationally positioned to get the best out of who they are. That's the second one, relationship structure. Now, the third one, and the one I'll emphasize on today, is what I call the digital structure. The digital structure. There are some structures that you need to have digitally that can really position you, okay, profitably for global dominance. Can we go into that now? Your digital structures, that's the first thing. Digital structures. Now, the first digital structure everyone needs to have, and when I talk about this, you think you already have it until I explain. The first digital structure you need to have, okay, in 2020 that can help you position for global dominance is social media. Social media. Someone should write that down for me. Social media. Now, do you know that anybody can create a social media account? But not everybody can create a social media structure. Are you here? Are you getting that? Anybody, anybody at all with night plan, 100 megabyte plan, 10 MB can create a social media account. But not anybody, not everybody can create a social media structure. Your social media account allows you to do the things that the people that created social media want you to do. Hmm. Your social media account allows you to do the things that the people that created the social media platform want you to do. But your social media structure allows you to do the things that you want to do. I, I will follow you. Your social media account allows you to do the things that the people that created the the platform wants you to do, while your social media structure allows you to do the things that you want to do. So if you have a social media account, you are going to be, you are going to post, right? You are going to comment, you are going to go on Instagram, spend, you, okay, then you want, you want to check a picture for five minutes and two hours, you are still there, you are scrolling. And, ah, man, look at this new car. Car, all these people. You see, you see someone eating Indomie. Say, are you sure it's not palliative Indomie? That's just scrolling, you're scrolling. What, what's happening today? This, that, that. You wanted to check something for 10 minutes, but you're there for two hours. You are doing what the people that created that platform want you to do because you have what? An account. Without an account, you can't do that. So you're scrolling, you're checking, you're double tapping, you're, you're, you're doing this, and in your mind, you're having activity. Not every activity rewards you. Not every activity rewards you. Not every activity is productive enough to reward you. So do not have a social media account. Have a social media structure. With a social media structure, you are coming online. You are commenting, but you are doing what is called strategic commenting. So you're not just aimlessly roaming around. You're commenting strategically. And I'll talk about that later. So how do you create a social media structure instead of just an account? All of you may have social media accounts, but not all of you have social media structures. How do you create it? Very practical. Let's get into it. Are you ready? I will get some value so far. So how do you create a social media structure? How do you create it? Now, the first thing you must do if you are ready today to start creating a social media structure is what I call sanitization. Write that down for me. Sanitization. Do you know why? See, it's not all of us that we are born with sense. Mm. It's not all of us that started posting zip codes from bed. 
there are some of us that before we had sense, we had posted plenty of rubbish online. Plenty. And those things are just there waiting for the day that you're about to make it. The things you've posted when you were still in your days of ignorance, they are just hiding somewhere, waiting for that day that, ah, man, this guy's destiny is about to open to just come up. Someone will just comment on it and to come back up. You see, retweet, left, right, and said that. So the first thing you must do if you want to create a social media structure, not just an account, is to go to your accounts and sanitize it. What do I mean? Go backwards, check backwards. And um, by the way, if you want to do this, right, there is, I have this video on Instagram. If you go to my IGTV, all right, there's this video I made that allows you to, that teaches you exactly how you can easily clear, delete some things from years ago that you've posted before. You can, my, my Instagram, okay, yeah. Thank you, Dicta. So Dicta just put up my Instagram. They are fisting. Okay, so you can you can check that out. Go to my IGTV. You see a video like that. Okay. Now you need to get to that point where you can clear, sanitize those things that don't make sense. If you posted something before that made sense, but you posted it in shorthand, so instead of writing Y O, you wrote you. You wrote uh, ah man those days. And you know those days we still think we are doing something very serious. When you post like that, you are like the happening person. Sometimes even the the real spelling of the word and the shorthand spelling is the same number of characters. You're not saving data, you're not saving anything, you're not saving time. But you just post, thank God for light. Thank God for, <laughs> for what we know now. So you know that before then, before now, you were posting like that. Go back. Either you delete it or you edit it and make it look like where you're going to. Go and see the things you can edit. There are some parts of your past you cannot edit. But there are some parts of your past the ones online that you can edit to so make it look like your future. The fact that you were like that before does not mean that people should go back and see those things. That you know, I was watching a particular night, night school with John Obidi. He's speaking today, by the way. It shouldn't be a session. And, and he said that someone came to him and was like, um, hello, Daddy Joe. I've, I've gone through all the things you posted since when you started this, that, And he was just laughing. He was like, you didn't see everything I posted since I started. You saw the things I wanted you to see. You didn't see everything that I posted since I started. You saw the things I wanted you to see. So you must get to that point where your social media account has only the things you want people to see. If there's something there you don't want them to see, what is he doing there? <laughs> what is he doing there? <laughs> What's going on here? You have to get to that point where you can remove those ones. So that's the sanitization stage, okay? Now, after sanitizing, the next thing you need to do to make your social media account a social media structure is to do what is called um I, I i would love to call it branding but i won't call it branding because that's a very big term okay you have to get to that point where you can establish a a um a, a social media content structure i'll explain that i'll call it promise a brand promise now what do i mean by brand promise that's the second thing now your brand promise I'm, remember we're talking about positioning your brand profitably using digital tools and platforms need to have a brand promise. Your brand promise is what are the things that someone that has an interaction with your social media account, what are the things they can gain from that interaction? There are some people that their brand promise is comedy and it's working for them. Look at Bovi, look at Chris Clown, look at um, Basketball. There are people like that, even um, upcoming people that are doing well, that is their brand promise. But you, you say your brand promise is digital. You go on your bio, you say digital marketer, content creator, visual strategist. And when we go through your feed, everything we are seeing are jokes. If you are not reposting from Mr. Macaroni today, you're posting Taoma, you're posting this, you're posting that. What is your brand promise? See, you must get to that point where you both identify your brand promise and not just that, you act like who you are. <laughs> You act like who you are. If your brand promise is content creation, we should come to your page and either see that your content is well created yourself, then also see that you can also teach us how to create content better. If your brand promise is to help food businesses in Nigeria or in your locality in Lagos, in Kaduna, to you're helping food businesses to have digital presence, we should come to your page and see that that's what you're doing. So have your brand promise listen your brand promise is not created online it is expressed online did you get that did you get that someone should write that down for me your brand promise is not created online it is expressed online 
That means whatever you're going to create as a brand promise, you won't create it online. You will create it on your own, in your room, by yourself, offline. Then when you come online, you can now express it. You can edit your bio. You can edit your profile. You can edit your content structure and express what you've created. So to create a brand promise, do not go and look at everybody's brand promises. No. Start with yourself. You can get inspiration from people. That's fine. But start with yourself. Start with yourself. So before I go, before I go into other um, digital structures, let me just say these things. Let me just say this set of things. Now, when I'm talking about structure, there are some things I'm talking about, okay? When I'm talking about structure, there are some things I'm talking about, right? The first thing I'm talking about when I'm talking about structure is who you are. Because if, if you don't understand structure, every other thing I'll talk about after now may not really make sense to you. Your structure, first of all, is who you are. Who are you? Who are you? You are what? See, I am I'm a digital marketing consultant. I am a content creator. I'm a video creator. Who are you? That is the first thing. Who you are. The second thing, okay, for your structure is what you do. What do you do? So because what you do is supposed to come out from who you are. So who you are, what you do. Now, how do you do it? Because two people can be doing the same thing in different ways. There can be two digital marketers. Both of us are doing digital marketing. But one person is doing digital marketing for individuals, for personal brands. Another person is doing digital marketing for business. So number one is who you are. Number two, what you do. Number three, how you do it. How do you do it? Number four, the last one is where do you do it? What is your main platform? What is the main place you operate from? Where do you do what you do? Answer these questions by yourself. This is how I, I, I have to make this point because this is how you create your brand promise. So later, after now, go back and answer these questions. After you answer these questions, you can now edit your bio and your social media account starts becoming a social media structure. Now, the last thing on that social media structure, which I'll still talk about later, is what is called visibility. Visibility, very important, visibility. I'll talk about that later. So let's just put it at that, visibility, okay? Now, the next structure you need to create, the next digital structure you need to create after social media is your email list. Now, listen, now when we talk about email list, do you know that it's possible that you can be somewhere and you assume that at this stage of your growth or at this stage of your life, you have, you've not yet gotten to that point where you need an email list. It's possible. And that may be true. You can say that at this your level, you don't need an email list. Well, to you, that may be true. But remember, you are in this session right now because you don't want to remain where you are. You want to get to that point where you can ne really negotiate for dominance globally. Globally, you can negotiate globally from where you are. So even if at this point you feel that way, you can change that feeling by taking some actions. See, everybody that will really negotiate for global dominance using digital tools and platforms need to have what is called an email list in 2020. In 2020, you need to have an email list. And I'll give you some platforms you can use for that. For social media, I, I really recommend you have a Facebook account, you have a Twitter account, you have an Instagram account, you have a LinkedIn account. Those are the four I recommend. The other ones, you can have them here and there. Also, YouTube is also very much recommended. Okay, so you can take note of that. Have those accounts. And uh, I think I'm going back, but let me just talk about this for one minute. Now, some people have asked questions like, do I need to have accounts everywhere? Do I, do I need to have accounts everywhere? I, I, I don't need to be here, I don't need to be there. See, my recommendation, and this is from me, is that you should have accounts everywhere. I did not say you should be active everywhere. Creating an account is like buying land. It's not every land you buy that you must develop. You may not be active everywhere, but have an account everywhere. Think about the big brands you want to be like. Think about Zenith Bank. Think about Coca-Cola. Think about, give me names of brands. Someone should give me name of a brand. Any big brand you can think about. Don't they have accounts in those places? You say you want to be like these people, but you don't want to do what they are doing. Even the one that is, is, is free to do. You want to be like the big people, but you see what they are doing and you say, no, I'm not going to do this. My, 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 my this thing is, is, is different. So what are, uh, someone is saying, Treasure says Nike, for example. Now, if, if you look for, it's, it's an amazing shoe brand, Adidas, Nike, right? These, these are brands that are amazing, 
But what do they do? Do they have accounts everywhere? Yes, they do. So have accounts everywhere. You may not develop all of them the same way, but have accounts in these places and keep it, keep them. Very important. Do you know that? And how many of you saw David Doe's um, tweet recently? How many of you saw that his tweet? Did anybody see it? Some people ask, look at me now and say, ah, so please to listen to David Doe and this and that. That's your business. So how many of you saw his tweet, okay? If you saw his tweet, you find out that he's just recently he was able to change his Instagram handle to David Doe because someone had taken that name since. Someone has taken that name since. Secure your names before you blow. <laughs> when you blow, if someone else is using that name, to take a while for you to get that in. Okay? So secure those names. So let's continue. Email list. For your email list, I would really recommend two platforms for email list. Um, the easiest to use for me is MailChimp. That's the easiest to use for me. MailChimp. Okay, so I can write that down. MailChimp for your email list. The second one that is really getting gaining popularity, and I've also tried testing out, that is also great, is SendFox. Send Fox. So I want to write that down for me in the comment box soon. Send Fox. So what you can do is you can go ahead after this session and either get a course on how to create an email list or watch a YouTube video or something, but on your own, try and see how you can learn how these platforms can allow you create an email list for yourself. All right. Now, the next thing I'll talk about on that digital structures very quickly is your website. Now, listen. Just like email is, there are people that have not yet accepted that they need a website, but you do. There are free platforms now that can allow you have a website, okay, without uh, without having to pay money. There are things like Disha Page, okay, by by Creditor, amazing amazing platform. Um, there are, there are several things that allow you to have a website right now without having to pay any money. I, I, I'm actually I'm I'm working on something. Maybe maybe after now I'll talk about that. I'm working on something that allows you to. I'm working on a course that explains to you practically how you can create a version of a website using some of these free tools. Okay, those of you that are interested, maybe you can send me a DM later, but I won't talk about that right now. Now, but you need a website if you want to negotiate for global dominance. It is a digital structure that you need. See, you may not have it right now, but what I want you to do is, after this session, or even as the session is going on, write a date, write a date down. You can write, 1st of February 2021. You can write 1st of January. You can write 31st of March or 1st of June. But write a date and say that by this time, by this time, I must have my own website. Do you know what that does for you? It allows you to plan to grow. Some of you are not, you're not planning to grow. You're not, you're not, you're not planning to, how, when do you want to have your website? I don't know, you know, I don't know this and that, but it's okay to have a website. Why? A website is a structure, is a platform that allows you to serve more people. Your website allows you to serve more people. So create a website, have a date in mind. Either you learn how to do it yourself or you get an excellent developer to help you do it, but plan to have a website, okay? So these, are, these three things I've talked about are structures that you can start even from today to create digital structures you can create that can allow you to position your brand profitably. Social media structure, email list, websites, allows you to position your brand profitably. Now, the next thing you need to know, and people don't talk about this a lot, but I'll highlight it, right? The next thing, the first thing I've talked about is structure. Follow me, okay? Structure is the first thing. The second thing you must know is system. So I want to write systems for me. So we have structures and we have systems. Now, systems are important because without systems, okay, your structures become too tedious to maintain. Systems allow you to save time, number one. It allows you to save time. Systems allow you to conserve energy. Systems allows you to save money. See, listen, if you are going to be if you are going to really get to the point of negotiating globally, one of the things you must protect at almost every cost is your time. Because, see, you, you need time to do a lot of things. You need time. Anything that can give you time, take it. Some of us are learning and learning as much as we can because we want to be able to get to that point where we have sufficient time to do what we want. That's what you should do. So systems are those things that allow you to get to a point where you can save time, you can 
conserve energy and you can save money. So what systems can you create? What systems can you create that can allow you to save these things? This I'm talking about position your brand profitably now, your brand profitably. What systems can you create for your brand, your business, your personal brand? What systems can you create that can allow you to save time, save energy, save money? The major kinds of system you must create is called automation systems. Automation system. Imagine that dicta. How many of you got a mail when you registered for this convention? How many of you got a mail? Imagine that dicta had to go to each of you and start sending you, um, oh, okay, thank you for your registration. It's, it's, it's amazing to have you here. Um, join, use this link to join. Click on this link and this and that. Or she told you thank you for registering. Then after that, she came and said, okay, please send your phone number. Let me add you to the WhatsApp group. Or let me add you to the Telegram group. Imagine that would work out that been for her. Those systems exist. It is those days that <laughs> it's those days that you know on, on your birthday when you get a text message from your bank, the same bank that just withdrew 52 naira from you from you for nothing yesterday. They will now tell you on your birthday that uh, happy birthday fee. We, we love you so much. We've been thinking about you all night and everything. On your birthday, you get those messages and you'll be feeling good at car. Guess what? Guess what? You call your friends, Zenith Bank remembered me. They, you probably don't even wish me happy birthday. Look at look at my text message. Look at Zenny Bank has sent me text. You'll be, you'll be feeling happy there. But now that we know, we know that all those things have been automated even before you join the bank. <laughs> even before you join the bank. See, listen to me. One thing you must do if you want to really be big is watch what big people are doing and replicate the ones you can do at your level. Watch what they are doing and replicate the ones you can do at your level. It's not everything the big people are doing that you can do right now, but the ones that you can, try to do it. Try to do it. So those messages have been automated long before. They don't have to employ a new person that, oh, welcome to, welcome to, to Union Bank. You're working at bank is to be sending birthday messages. We discover that people feel happy when we send them messages. So please, every day, you go through the list of people that have birthday today and be texting them. No, they don't need that. Why? Because of systems. Because of systems. Now, the first system and the major system you need right now is what I call automation systems. Systems that allow your work to happen without your active participation. Automation systems are those systems that allow your work to happen without your active participation. So you can have email automations. You can have email automations. You can have automations that allow you to sell a course for your brand now. I'm, remember, I was talking about positioning your brand profitably. You can have automations that allow you to sell your course without being actively a part of the process. You can have automations that allow you to receive payment from customers. It's not every time that you, you say, okay, okay, have you gotten the account number? Uh, okay, you've got it. When you pay, let, let me know you have paid. Then send send proof of payment on WhatsApp. Then after that, I'll check my bank account to see if it has entered. And then I'll now add it to the group. No, 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 no. There, there are systems that exist right now that you can utilize to automate that process. So you can sleep. Don't people like sleep? I didn't say too much sleep oh, before you post. Ah, oh, man, fee, you see fee. I like this session. It just came up and it was telling us that we should sleep. We should sleep. I did not say that. I didn't say that though. <laughs> okay, so so that you can rest at least. Rest allows you to, to really, you know, come back up, come back up. Okay. So get systems. Now, a system that you can use for payment automation. I'll take them step by step. I started with payments. Don't mind me. I like money sometimes. So a system, or there are some systems you can use for payment automation, digital systems. Number one is Paystack. Paystack. Now, some of you are using it already, but Paystack has some more automation features, okay? Um, I, I can't talk about them right now, but for those of you that will get the course I just talked about, um, I, I think it's one of the things I talked about there, right? But there are some automation systems you can use with Paystack. You can research it yourself. You can use YouTube and check those things, right? That allows you to do a complete payment automation. That means after someone pays, the person can be redirected to a particular link, allows the person to register, allows the person to get a mail, onboards the person to your platform. It's a whole structure. But see, this is how you become profitable. You don't become profitable by being a part of everything. Your time will be strained. You have just 24 hours. You have just 24 hours. 
Or don't you plan to have 20 people that are attracted to your brand? Of course you do. So you have to prepare for them, right? So Paystack is one platform for payment automation. Someone should write payment automation for me, right? Now, the, the second thing, the second platform for payment automation that I've used and I, I think is really great is Flutterwave. Flutterwave. Flutterwave have some options for payment automation too. So you can check out Flutterwave, okay? So Paystack, Flutterwave, check those platforms out. That's for payment automation. For email automation, I've talked about MailChimp and SendFox before. Those two also do email automation, okay? That's for email automation. Now, am I back? You know, when, when you're... If I'm back, let me know that you can see me. Can you see me and hear me now? Can you see me and hear me now? I don't, I don't know what just happened, really. I don't know what just happened because you know that's why for sessions like this you have to have like subscriptions everywhere because sometimes you just end up you just end up having network issues okay it just comes up and it goes but let's continue right now I was talking about system for email right what was I talking about have I talked about email systems I was talking about customer attraction and retention systems customer attraction and retention systems, right? That's what I was talking about. Now, for customer attraction and retention is to get to a point where you can, and I'll talk about ads option. That's Facebook ads, Instagram ads, um, Google Ads, things like that. Those things allow you to automate your customer process. You are to get a new customer to your brand. You can automate those things, okay? So that's one of the ways you can automate the process of customer acquisition. Many people use these things and you can do it. This is that sometimes we have not everything that a big person is doing that you cannot do. You can do some of them at your level. You don't have to do it at this level. You can do it at your level, okay? So create systems that can help your structure. Do you get that? I'm running out. Please put a comment, dig that for me. Let me know how long I have left so that I can, I don't want to, I don't see if I can give them everything I brought for them, okay? Now, the next set of things, right, that you need to do, okay, to really position your brand profitably using digital tools and platforms is what I call skills. See, listen. Skills, skills. Remember, I started with structure. I went to systems. After structures and systems, the next thing is skills, skills. Your systems allow you to save time, save, conserve energy, and save money. Your skills allow you to become a solution. Do you know why? Nobody is really interested with, nobody is really interested with you, nobody. See, people, you think that people so much like you and so much, see, nobody's really there. It's not that serious. Don't deceive yourself. People are only attracted. You can only gain people's attention by the value you're able to provide, by the solutions you're able to provide for them. Attention comes to you to the degree of the solution, of the value you've been able to imbibe within yourself and provide. So your skills allow you to provide these solutions for people. Your skills allows you to provide that solution for people. So the next thing you need to do to position your brand is to get to that point where you are in an active, active skill development process. And I will highlight some skills that if you do not have, or rather if you have at a low level, you need to start upgrading from today. If you want to get any chance at negotiation, there are some skills you have to start upgrading from today. See, what skills do for you is that skills make you easy to help. I read this post by Remy Owadokun, a post about making yourself easy to help, and it's, it's a, it's a full-time fact. Some, of, some people are so hard to help. Some of you are really, really hard to help. So someone wants to help you, but something comes up, you're not qualified for it. Or nothing comes up, you don't know how to do it. Next thing comes up. There are so many opportunities coming up around them, but they don't know how to help you. Why? You have not been able to develop yourself to any point where you can be helped. Am I having a network issue? Can you hear me? Is it better now? I want my network to be better because I, I think I think I was having a bit of a network issue. Is it better now? Is it more fluent? Is it more fluent now? 
Yes, it is TV. Yeah. How many more minutes Continue. do I have, Dicta? You just have less than five minutes. And we have oh, okay, guys. To we have five minutes to run. We have five minutes to run. Great, let's do this, Dicta. Let's do this. Thank you. So I have less than five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and compress what I can within the next five minutes. And you no, know, those of you that are here, what you can do if you have a question for me, okay, just follow me on Instagram at Feastiving, then send me a DM, okay? Send me a DM as much as possible. Um with the time I have, I'm going to go ahead and go through that and see the ones I can answer. So if you have a question for me, just go ahead and go to Instagram right now, follow me, send me a DM, or if you have any comments at all for me, go ahead and do that right now. Um, yeah. So let's continue, guys. So I was talking about skills. You need to make yourself easy to help. So when, when people want to help you, you should be so easy to help that as soon as they think about, okay, who can do these things? Oh, it's Chinedu. Chinedu can do it. Who can do this other one? It, it has to be no other person. It has to be, which name should I use again? Um, me, me, is, it, is it Mural that I'm saying? No, it's not Mural. Um, Chiamaka. Yes, Chiamaka on, my, on the comment box, right? So Chiamaka can do it very well. So when it's time to help, it's your name that comes to your mind. Why? Because of your skills. Not just because of your skills, but because of the solution you are becoming and you are giving. You must become a solution and you must give that solution you are becoming to other people. So what skills do you need right now in 2020 that can help you negotiate for global dominance? The first skill you need is the skill of content creation. Do you get that? Content creation. And I'll run through this very quickly. Content creation is the first skill that you need if you want to really, really, really position your brand profitably. Content creation. I want to mean by content creation, ability to create masterful content. See, in 2020, creating content is no more enough. Your content has to get to that point where it's able to attract attention. There's some contents that are simple. It's not like design is so much. It's simple, but the quality attracts attention. The quality attracts attention. And let me run through this. There are several kinds of content you can create. The first type of content is text content. Text content. For you to improve creation of text content, I have a personal recommendation for you. If you know that you want to learn how to write better, you want to create better text content, written content, the recommendation I have for you is you need to do two things every day. Every single day, you need to read and you need to write. Sounds simple, but it's not that simple if you start it. Every day, intentionally read. I'm not saying, some of you will say, oh, we should be reading. Ah, that's great. You'll be going through Instagram and you're reading captions. You're reading Facebook posts. No, no, no. I mean intentional reading. Not Instagram. No, read intentionally. Read on the topic that you want to learn about. So you must read every day and you must do what you must write every day. So every single day, go ahead and try to write. It doesn't have to be two pages. No, just write something little. You can journal your day. Okay, that's the first thing for text content. You can also use digital tools like Grammarly. Grammarly is a tool that allows you to work on your on your um on your English structure. So your English comes out excellently. Okay. So Grammarly helps you do that. You can use answerthepublic.com. So I should write that down for me. Answerthepublic.com. Amazing tool. You can use title-generator.com. Amazing tool. Someone should, so please, someone should be writing these things for me because I'm trying to rush. Someone should write that in comment box for me. Now, the next type of content is what is called picture content. Picture content. And this is, this is very, very, very important because you have to put out the best version of yourself out there. See, some of you have decided that you want to start from small. You've, you've said that um, you, because you've heard so many people saying they started from small and they became big, which is true but you have decided to reduce your small so that you can look small. If you are intentionally looking small, that you're not doing yourself a favor. If you have an opportunity to take a nice picture, take it. If you have an opportunity to use your friend's phone and snap picture, use your friend's phone and snap it. See, people will say that uh, you're boring phone up and down, but those same people that are saying those things, that they are, they are boring phone, those same people on their birthday, they'll go to a full studio. They will borrow camera, they'll borrow backdrop, They'll borrow lights, they'll borrow human being, they'll borrow everything and snap a picture for their birthday. But you, you went to your friend and said, please give me your iPhone, let me snap a picture. And they say, ah, borrow, borrow your borrowing phone. Please borrow it, borrow yourself to succeed, borrow the phone. Your pictures must be excellent. Because people are visual. See, human beings, we walk by sight. That's why even Samuel, a prophet, <laughs> Samuel was a prophet, but he went to the house of Jesse and he looked at the first one and was like, Kai, fine boy. Look at, look, at his, look, at, look at his abs, look at how handsome he looks. He's tall, taller than everybody around here. And you say, this, this, this boy, he has to be the one that God has chosen. 
And God was like, no, 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 that's not, that's not how I choose. But God gave you a secret. God told you exactly how human beings choose. So for you to be choosing, please look good. Look good online. Your pictures have to be excellent. So you can use some tools. Snapseed. Someone should write that down for me. Snapseed is, an, is a tool that you can use for editing your pictures. Adobe Lightroom is also another tool that I use. Someone should write that down for me, okay? Now, for the next type of content is graphic design. Graphic design content is a mixture of picture and text, right? For graphic design content, you can use Canva. In fact, I, I recommend only Canva now. For this class, I'm recommending only Canva. Because some of you, you want to know the, please, fee. what are the 22 applications I can use for graphic design? And you don't use one. You want to know 22. You have to confuse yourself. Why not use the one that is working? Canva is working, guys. Canva is good. Use it. Okay, learn it and use it. Um, then we also have audio content. You can use um, Anchor for that. Audio content, Anchor works for that. For video content, you can use InShorts or you can use KindMaster. Is someone writing these things for me? InShorts, KindMaster. Someone should write that down for me. Now, learn how to use these things and improve your content creation. Now, the next thing you must learn, the next skill you must learn, okay, in 2020 that can really help you, either you learn it, okay, or you have the money to hire it, is advertising, especially Facebook advertising. Especially Facebook advertising. Learn that skill called Facebook advertising, okay? Why? Because you need to get to that point where knowing that you want to dominate globally, you have to position yourself at a level that people can see you. Okay? So, faith advertising, that's another skill. Um, so, I've talked about structure, I've talked about systems, I've talked about skills and solutions. And as I come to the end of today, I'll talk about visibility. Two minutes and I'll be done. Two minutes. Visibility. No matter how much you've done these other things, you must invest in your visibility. Invest in being seen. Invest in people seeing you. Very important. Very important. So visibility is about marketing and growing your audience, growing people that listen to you. If you have something good, it is best to make as many people as possible. Okay? It's best to make as many people as possible know about it. And you must do it almost every day. Do you know why? People that are doing bad things, they, they see, people that are doing bad things, they, they do it every day. Have you not heard about the devil who goes around roaming left and right looking for someone to devour? Does he does it do any, he does it every day? So you that you are doing something good. Why are you saying uh, well let me just hide it? Start right here. Well, you can start from small, you can do things behind the scenes, but get to a point where you know that every king, okay, every king will get to that point where he will be known. So, what do you need for visibility? You need to learn the art of content marketing. Now I've talked about it in detail, but I'm out of time. So, content marketing will help in visibility, and then also using Facebook ads would also, um, also help in your visibility. As I come to the end of the session today, I want to make a statement that I talk about a lot very quickly. And that statement is that growth will cost you, but not growing will cost you more. Do you get that? So I want to write that down. Growth will cost you, but not growing will cost you more. For any level of growth you want to have, it will cost you something. It may cost you time, it may cost you energy, it may cost you money, but it must cost you something. But you deciding that because your growth is costing you, you don't want to grow. Not growing after some time will cost you even more than it would have cost you if you had grown. So decide to grow. Decide to grow. Decide that no matter your current level, big or small, you will grow. Can someone should write out that? Someone should write, I will grow. Right, I will grow in the comment box. Right, I will grow in the comment box. So thank you all for being a part of the session this evening. Thank you, Dicta. It's amazing to be here. Did you get value? If you got value, go ahead and let me know in the comment box. I can see some of you already putting fire emojis. Amazing. Let me know you got value. Did you learn from today? Was the session valuable to you? Let me know in the comment box. Thank you all for being a part of today. And I think I'm good. Hmm. Hello, guys. I don't know if I am the only person feeling the heat right away here. I like, are you feeling the heat? Are you feeling the fire right away? Steven, you just smashed everywhere. Thank you so much, guys. If you got value, please drop it in the comment section. I want to see the fire emoji. The fire emoji right away. The fire emoji. Okay, yes, I can see it. Okay, Steven, you smashed the whole place today. Guys, if you really want to get more of this value, please follow Steven at Fizz TV 
on Instagram, and of course, you are going to get all the value you so deserve. Okay, I can see. Let me put up the prayer emojis on the on the screen so that you can also see that my people here in Serene Africa got value from you. Like we got value, we want to really appreciate you. Thank you very much for all the value you shared today. You brought so much to the table. Of course, um, we really, really want to say thank you. We now know that if no, there's no limitation for us, we can always grow beyond our stages using platforms and, of course, digital tools. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you at the back end. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Steven. Okay, guys, this is me, Okoye Jomadikta, and of course, you know, we have our second guest on board. He is right waiting for us, but you know, so we want to give Steven a standing ovation. Please put up the fire emoji, clap, give him the clapping hands in the fire, in the comment section so that he will know that you got value. Okay, so we want to call up our next guest, but before then, we're going to put up his next, um, up next flyer so that he will know that he is going to be the one on board right away. Okay, I can see this, the fire emoji. Okay, a lot of people are saying they're going to go to his inbox and all of that. Thank you so much, um, Serena's. We are really, really glad that you are getting value from the Young and More Africa Convention 2020. So we're going to be having our speaker, the next speaker up, and he is going to be speaking to us on something amazing. You do not want to miss it. Watch out, keep tabs. <laughs> Mr. Elijah Maman. I don't know if you can hear me clearly. Good evening. Oh, it's even afternoon over here. <laughs> okay, you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's good to have you right away on the Yama Convention, Thank Younger you. More Africa Convention. And we are super excited for the value you're about to bring to the table, guys. If you know you want to hear Mr. Elijah Maman share, but please leave it in the comment section. Say, I am ready. <laughs> are you ready for today? Are you ready? Like, do you want to feel the vibe? Are you going to feel the vibe today? You don't want to miss any part of this session. Please leave it in the comment section. Say, I am ready so that we can get started immediately. Right, right. I want to see it in the comment section. Put your comment so that I will bring it up on the screen. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, I can see I am ready. Wow. Okay, there are a lot of I am ready. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. Wow, beautiful. So, guys, we are about to listen to Elisha Mam. And of course, you know, he is the convener of the winning mindset. But before then, we're going to play his bio so that we will get to know who we are going to be listening to. To today. Um, of course, you know the speakers that have been selected for this Young and More Africa Convention are not just your usual speakers. There are people who come with so much value to the table. And of course, you know, we have been getting value from the first day. And today is, is not going to be an exception. The first speaker for today has smashed the house. And we are about to listen to another person who is going to bring so much value and of course, shatter the table for those of us who are on top. Oh, we are going to be playing your bio, Mr. Elijah Maman. And um, after that, you will take up the stage. Thank you. 
as a John Maxwell certified coach, public speaker and trainer, Elisha Maman has an average of over 100 speaking engagements annually. He is recognized as one of the most sought after inspirational speakers in Northern Nigeria and a force in leadership, success and the winning mindset. Between 2019 and 2020, he has spoken to over 50 institutions and delivered keynote speeches in conferences in various states of Nigeria. As a top-notch award-winning leadership and mindset coach, Elisha Maman has spoken on essential life mastery topics including leadership, goal setting, value creation, decision making and so on. He has also facilitated result-oriented training sessions for teachers and students respectively. He is the convener of the Winning Mindset, a platform committed to inspiring possibilities, initiating dreams and birthing realities in lives. This has a reach of over 600 youths in the city of Kaduna monthly with an online community of over 10,000 people. Several individuals and businesses have received grants and rewards for excellence on this platform. It is the fastest growing motivational platform in Northern Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Elisha Maman. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for what you do. Dicta, I appreciate you for the platform and for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I've been here for, I've been at the back for some time, listening to my boss and mentor, Chris Steven. I appreciate you, Fee, for that which you have spoken concerning what it will take us to negotiate our place globally. So Dicta, once again, you so much for having me on your platform. I appreciate you, and um, I, I hope we will get to see more. All right. Um, I am going to be talking about goal setting. I'm going to be talking about goal setting and the place of goal setting in negotiating your place for global relevance. The first thing you must understand is this. Dominion cannot happen by chance. Dominion, whatever kind of dominion, it will never happen by chance. It will happen by choice and a very intentional choice. Number two, dominion cannot happen anyhow. It has to happen somehow. What that tells you is this. Dominion will happen via structure and system via structure and system. Your actions, your behavior, the things you do must have structure. There must be a system you follow if you will ever dominate your field, your industry, your family, or your home. And lastly, dominion cannot happen overnight. We are in a generation where everyone wants to become everything in one day. Everyone is in a hurry to become their best in one night. The things that we call dominion cannot happen. To dominate cannot happen overnight. It will happen over time. That tells you that dominion has a process. It takes a process to dominate. It takes a process to dominate. Another thing I want you to know is that number one, dominion is purpose. Every one of us has that mandate to dominate better than somebody else. But for those of us who understand dominion, we know that dominion is so personal. It is an expression of your creativity in its highest form. It's the expression of your excellence. Dominion is not just purposeful. Dominion is possible. Listen to me. If it has happened for somebody before, it can happen for you.
If it, is, if it has happened for somebody before, it has happened to you. Few years ago, John OBD, who is one of our speakers in this conference, was nominated one of the uh, 100 most influential young people in Nigeria. Just few days ago, the same John OBD was, 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 was nominated again the same industry for the most influential young Africans. <laughs> That's to tell you, if it is possible for John, it is possible for me. If it is possible for John, it is possible for Dicta. If it is possible for John, it is possible for Edosa. Listen to me. Dominion is not just purpose. Dominion is possible for anyone that is willing to take responsibility. And lastly, dominion requires a process to happen. It simply means there's a path to take to dominate. It simply means there are things, there are stages to follow through if you will have dominion in whatever you are doing. Now, saying that dominion is the purpose of every man does not necessarily mean that every man will have dominion. This is important because that something is possible does not mean it will happen. Everyone is willing to pay the price for dominion. Listen to me. To win, to become a king, it will cost you something. There is a price to pay for influence. Dominion is the product of consistent influence. Dominion is the outcome of progressive production. I come again. Dominion is the product of consistent influence. And dominion is the outcome of progressive production. If you produce productively, if you produce progressively, over time, you will conquer a territory. There are two words there. Production and progress. L. Nightingale said, L. Nightingale said, that success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal of a worthy goal now listen to me the most important tool for dominion is results the most important tool for dominion the tool that you need to negotiate your place globally the tool that you need to negotiate your place nationally, the tool that you need to negotiate your place regionally is called results. Results are the outcome of production. Production is the ability to produce results. Dominion is the outcome of progressive production. It means to dominate any field, to dominate nation, to dominate states, you must produce result and you must produce it progressively. The, to secure a global standing for you today, you need to conquer consistently to have dominion. You, you need to become a person who accomplishes progress. What has this got to do with goal setting? Goal setting is simply about dominion. Goal setting is a skill that you engage so you can create results. A result is the tool that you need for negotiation. Then goal setting is important for you. 
And goal setting is also a process. Goal setting is also intentional. Goal setting is also a personal journey. Goal setting is about identifying exactly what you want. Establishing exactly what you need to do. And doing it. So goal setting is encompassing all activities that has to do with identifying the things you want. Designing a plan to have what you want and working the plan so you can have what you want. So goal setting is simply how you go about getting what you want in life. And if you are in this conference, it simply means, if you are here, it simply means that you have identified your goal. And that goal is global relevance. That goal is that you want to be relevant on a global stage. You want what you are doing to affect men across the world. You want what you have done to impact the world. The Holy Book says it starts from Judea to Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the world. That is progress. And that is also process. You don't start with the uttermost part of the world. You start with Judea. Then you move to Samaria. Then you get to Jerusalem. And then you get to the uttermost part of the world. It is a process. You start from Kaduna. You take the north. You move to the south. You go to Africa. And then you go to the world. It is a process. Goal setting is about what you want and what you need to do to get what you want. Goal setting is about what you want and what you need to do to get what you want. Goal setting is the art <laughs> and the skill of making promises to yourself with an intention to keep them. It is the art of predicting your future and making the relevant sacrifice today to have that future. Goal setting is a tool, it is a skill, and it is a vehicle for, a, for, domina for, for, for domination. You need it to dominate what you are doing. Goals are about success. Goals are about progress. And goals are very, 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 very personal. And so, what are goals? They are targets. Goals are targets. Whether long term or short term, goals are targets to which all efforts are directed. Goals are targets to which all efforts are directed. Fee Stevens was talking about building structure, establishing systems. He was talking about developing skills. All these activities will be useless if there is no target to which they are directed to. Of what use if a, is a skill in your hand if there is no goal to direct it to us? Listen to me. Every action that is not directed at a goal is already wasted. Every action, every effort not directed at a goal is already wasted. Every action that is not directed to a goal is already missed. So many of us take very massive actions, but they have accumulated nothing for us. Why? They are activities. They are efforts that are not directed at anything. If you throw stone at nothing, you will get nothing. If you throw efforts at nothing, you will get nothing. If you throw skills at nothing, you will get nothing. Even a fisherman does not throw his net without a goal of Catching a fish. Goals, all activities, all tasks are directed. When we started the winning mindset in 2017, I had to come up with a goal. 
And the goal was to reach 10,000 people. The goal was to reach 10,000 people thinking from our well. So amazing. This is our top year. We have put together, our largest crowd was 900 and something people in a room. Online, we are over 10,000 today. It was a 10-year goal. We are just three years old. Every action we took was targeted at that results you have they come from actions you have taken the results you currently want concerning relevance they are hidden they are trapped until you take actions results are not released to you goals are targets a goal is also a desired outcome it is a desired outcome that requires intentional action to happen. A goal is a desired outcome that requires an intentional action to happen. What I'm saying is this. A goal is something you desire that requires something you must do to happen. Listen to me. You don't have results by wishing. It takes action to unleash results. It takes execution to produce experience. So, so this, is, this, is, this, is, this is what we are talking about tonight. And so, it's a target, and it is a desired outcome. It's a target, it's a desired outcome. Everything I do in my life is guided by the goals I set. Every action I take, every decision I make is guided by the things I truly want to accomplish. And in this conference, we are talking about domination. We are talking about global relevance. We are talking about you becoming a figure that the world can eat from. We're talking about you becoming a man or a woman that this world can learn from, that this world can eat from. When we talk about relevance, we're talking about ability to deliver solutions. The ability to deliver solutions. You see, there are three things I want you to take note when you begin to have results. Don't forget, goal setting is the skill, the art, and the process of creating results. It is the art of creating results. Now, if results are the tool for negotiation, why do you need results? Why do you need to become productive? Why do you need to pay attention to producing specific results in your life? One, Results brings recognition. When you begin to have results, you become easily recognized. By their fruits, you shall know them. Results brings recognition. People recognize you easily. They recognize the kind of person you are. They recognize your skillfulness and power by the results you have. So results brings recognition. Results bring recognition. By their fruits, you shall know them. Number two, results brings relevance. Results bring relevance. When you begin to produce certain results, 
it reveals the kind of solution you can bring to the table. The kind of results that your life brings forth tells others the kind of solution you carry. And it becomes easy for the problems you carry their solution to gravitate towards you. Results don't only bring recognition. Results bring relevance. Remember, relevance is about solutions. Results speak of the problems you have solved in your life. Results speaks of the problems you are solving in the lives of other people. Fees being rounded up with that matter. The matter of problem solving. That's where relevance is. And lastly, Results bring reward. So many of us want to be rewarded for our ideas. No man will reward you for an idea, but all men will reward you for results, for solution, for fruits. Until a mango tree produces mango fruits, that free you will not get the rewards why it is the fruits that you sell you don't sell the tree you sell the fruits and so result number one results bring recognition number two results bring relevance number three results bring reward why am i talking like this before i talk to you about four things you begin to do from today and begin to hit your goals it is because the people we follow today is because of the results we have seen them produce in their lives today a lot of young people follow john obd not because he is handsome not because he is he can speak English, but because John OBD just results for himself. John OBD is currently producing results for many young people. Many people are following Elisha today, not because I am the best, best dressed, most handsome guy in the north. No, it is because of the results I'm producing in my life and the results I am producing in the lives of people around me. Feast givings today is a testament of the results that I provide. Feast givings today is already generating results in his life and in the lives of other people. That's progression. Very key. So why do I want you to have results? Because one of the reasons why you are alive is to bear fruit. Bearing fruit equal producing results. The holy book says there is an axe at the bottom of the tree. And every tree that does not bear fruit will be cut down. A mango tree that is not bringing fruit is useless. He is occupying space and wasting time. Result is how you justify your place on earth. Result is how you justify relationships on earth. The holy book also said that wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by fruits. Your wisdom is not justified until it is producing solutions to men. The fantastic things you can say is irrelevant until it is solving problems for others. The way you appear, the way you shout, the way you move is of no use if it is not
not solving somebody else's problem. People don't pay you for showing up. People pay you for solving problems. I know there's a generation that says, just show up. My brother, if you will just show up and not solve problems, stay at home. You are supposed to show up to solve someone's problem. Showing up is easy. Solving problems is the purpose of man. Four things you have to do. Don't forget, we are talking about global relevance. We are talking about we taking our place. And social media has made that very, 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 very fantastic. Social media has helped us to be able, he was giving us certain tools. I know somebody that just started a podcast recently. And as we are talking like this, over nine countries are listening to the podcast. By just using the app called Anchor and doing something and publishing it out there. Now, nine countries, people from nine countries are paying attention to him. Amazing. Social media has made it easy, but at the same time, it is a dangerous place to deliver rubbish. People are waiting for you to manifest. People are willing to pay for a painful problem. People are willing to part with their money for the pleasures you can bring by the product you are creating. What pleasure do you bring? What pain do you solve? Will de determine the kind of reward that you, you will have, and it, it will determine your re relevance on a global scale. When, when we talk leadership today, we say John Maxwell. When you talk new media in Nigeria today, you say John Obidi. Amazing. Amazing. I don't want you to be discouraged. Remember I said domination can start from your local government. You can actually start from your house. Then you go to your state. Stop being in a hurry to conquer the world when you cannot conquer where you leave. Nobody in the entire street where you live is even looking up to you and you want the world to look up to you. You are joking. That's a joke. All right. Let me give you four things. Uh, in Elisha Mama International, we call it our four simple steps in goal setting. Remember, you cannot have what you do not know you want. You cannot have what you do not know you want. If you don't want global relevance, you will not have it. I was when I started and winning minds, but when I invited Don John o OBD to my platform and he began, and so the first thing to do is to desire. Desire is 
emotionalizing your wants. You want dominion. Desire is adding emotions. Become emotional about that thing that you want. Napoleon Hill said it is the starting point of all human achievement. It is the starting point of all human achievement. So now that you have established that you desire relevance, now that you have established that you want to be relevant in your state, you want to be relevant in your country, you want to be relevant globally, the first thing you need to do is to add emotions to that thing you want. It means desire it. Become obsessed about that outcome that you truly want. Then you go to the next stage. Number two, you need to start documenting your desires. You need to start documenting your goals. If that is what you want, you need to document it. Listen to me. Writing down what you want is an act of faith. Somebody write that down. To write down exactly what you want is an act of faith. It is also the first step to changing the form of what you truly want to have in your hand. The first way to handle your dream in your hand is to use your hand to write it down. The first way for your hand to touch your dream is to take a viral and write your dream down. Documenting your desire is a powerful force for realization of goals. After you desire, document it. Write it down. Forgive us. Uh, so desire, the four Ds, the first one is desire, which is you becoming obsessed about the things you want. The next one is your obsession should be translated into a form. And that form is write it down. People don't know how powerful it is to pick a pen and write down exactly the things they want. Make sure what you want is specific. Make sure what you want can be measured. Stop saying, I want to be rich. Rich means many things to many people. Start saying, I want a million naira. I want a million dollars. And then go ahead and document it like that. Write it in the present continuous. Write it in an accomplished state. He called those things that be not as though they were. So number one, you desire. Number two, you document. And number three, you design. You design a plan. Somebody help me right now. You desire what you want. You document exactly what you want. And you design a plan according to what you want. The plan must be according to what you want. The plan must be according to what you want. A plan is simply series of steps, series of tasks, series of action that is required to achieve a goal, that is required to meet an objective. Plan is about what I am supposed to do. Plan is about what I must do to accomplish what I want. Design a plan. It has to be a plan. Why? Because it has to be formal. It has to be intentional. I will do this. I will do this. I will make a post three times every week. I will make a post three times every day. I will make a post three times every month. He was talking about content creation. There was a time I only posted once in a while. When we became conscious about increasing our influence, there was a time I posted once every day. I grew up to post three times every day. And 
Canada began to move from Facebook to Instagram, from Instagram to Twitter. Yesterday, somebody that I respect so much was reading my status and he sent a message to me. He said, take these things on your status and put them on Twitter. You are blessing me. I want you to reach more people on Twitter. You are The people you are reaching on your status are limited. I'm talking about the MD of a company. This content, you are put it out there on Twitter. And I began to take Twitter serious. Listen to me. You have to have a plan. Every goal does not happen without a plan. It takes a plan for a goal to happen. It takes a plan. When we talk about plan, we're talking about strategy. Wars are won by strategy. It is not really strength that win wars. It is not really size that win wars. It is strategy that win wars. The race is not always to the, to the swift. The battle is not always to the strong. Why? It takes strategy. It takes counsel to win wars. And you are in a battle. Everyone is seeking attention. Everyone is seeking relevance. There is a battle for relevance. If you have to win that war, you will need a strategy to follow. And if your desire is to be relevant, then you need a plan that will ensure that you become relevant. Plan for your content. Plan for your appearance. Plan for your character. Plan for your brand. Very key. I know John Obidi is coming back later to talk about how to tap dominion. On that matter of global dominion, of course, I have deep respect for him. Deep respect. He has accomplished so much that I desire. I love him deeply from the depths of my heart. And every time I see him, I know it's possible for me to conquer Africa too. It's possible for me to conquer the world. Remember, I said dominion is possible. Design a plan. A plan is about the things that you have to do. Remember, the results are in the actions. You need to take action if you will ever see results. But you don't just take any action. The action must be informed. The action must be informed. They must be intentional. <laughs> the actions must be intentional and they, they must be informed action. You don't, the results you are looking for cannot come from just any action. The action have to be inspired by a mindset, informed by relevant, relevant information. And it must come from an intentional place. Do you know what you want? Do you know exactly what you need to do to get what you want? If you know that, then you have to go to the last place. The last place is the place of, of developing. Develop that plan. The word develop. In real estate means build it up. The word develop in real estate means improve it. So I'm talking about somebody. You already have a goal. You know what you want. You already drop a plan. It's time to take action. Listen to me. Until you take action, you will not be activated. It is actions that activate results. Take action and you will begin to see results. It does not matter how little the results are, but until you take action, you will never see any results. Until you make a move, even God will not move. He said, draw near and I will draw near to you. Listen to me. Every move you make moves something. Every move you make moves something. Listen to me. Every move you make towards your dream moves something towards you. It's time to take a move. It's time to develop your plan. I know you want dominion. I know you have written a plan. It's time to execute. It is only execution that provokes experience. Everything you want to experience in life requires something you must execute. It's time to take massive actions. It's time to take massive actions. It's time to learn that skill. It's time to write that book. It's time to release that song. It is time. Dominion. Happens over time, but the action must be in time. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I try as much as possible to stay within time. And from what I can see, I have used my time effectively. So I will be stopping here. Quickly write it, desire it, document it, design a plan for it, and develop the plan you have designed and you will begin to see the results that you have never seen before. Results are the tools for negotiating your relevance in life. No results, plenty insult. Presence of results eliminates insults. Listen to me once again, every one of you that have heard me, I go back to the beginning. Dominion must be intentional. Dominion is purpose. Dominion is possible. And dominion is a process. If you will take that process, it will be possible for you. Because it is your purpose to have dominion. Dicta, thank you so much for having me. This is the little I'm able to share within the time you have given me. I pray somebody out there has gotten value. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Mr. Elisha Maman. So when Africa people, did you get value? If you got value, please put it in the comment section. Leave a fire emoji in the comment section. Say thank you, leave a fire emoji. You know how we do it. Give me a standing ovation with the clap and the fire emoji. Please let me see it in the comment section right away. Did you get value? I can see the fire emoji right away, right away. Did you get value? Did you get value? Oh, goodness, we got value today, Mr. Elisha Maman. And of course, you know us from the comment section that we got value. We got value. Look, I can see the fire emojis right away. We got value. Thank you so much for the value you brought to this table. We are really, really glad. And um, of course, we know that you have got so much more for us. But we're going to stick with time and in order for us to have the next session, we are going to be calling it a wrap. Okay, guys. Um, I know there are a lot of people with so many questions and all of that. Please, the easiest way to get you, sir, how are we going to reach you easier? Uh, I, I respond to my Instagram DM faster. I'm not on Yahoo Messenger or Facebook Messenger. My Instagram DM is the fastest place to reach me. So you can follow me on Instagram and then you can send me a DM. I will respond to you as quick as I get it. I try as much as possible to do that. Wow, beautiful. And I think the, the Instagram angle on the screen is correct as Elisha Maman. Yes, 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 ma'am. Beautiful. So, guys, you know what to do. Take screenshots, go to Instagram, begin to tag the hell out of Mr. Elisha Maman on uh, IG. <laughs> tag the hell out of him on Instagram. Tag him and let the world know that you got value today. Okay, and of course, if you have a question and there is something you want to talk to him about, you know how to reach him on Instagram at Elisha Maman. Thank you so much, Mr. Elisha Maman. We got value from the comment session. We already know that there are so much value, there's so much value that you brought to the table today. We say thank you so much. Thank you so much for the value you brought. And of course, we hope to have you on board some other time. I'll talk to you behind the stage. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma. All right, sir. Okay, guys, you have seen that um, our second speaker for today at Elisha Maman came with so much value. I don't know if there is somebody who is feeling the heat here. Are you feeling the heat? Are you feeling the value that was being brought to this particular session? Okay, guys, please, if you know you're getting value, share this on your Instagram, share it on your WhatsApp status, share it everywhere on your Facebook page, take screenshots so that people will know that you are getting value. We're going to be calling it a break for now, um, just an hour break, or maybe a less than one hour, because I think we just have 58 more minutes. And of course, I'll be coming to share with you your principles for youth to negotiate for global dominance as a youth. A lot of people will say, can, what can I do as a young person? There is so much that's going to be happening in the next 58 minutes. I'll be coming on board, no more as a convener, but as the keynote speaker.
and I'll be sharing with you so much value. Okay, guys, we are really going to be calling into a break now. Please restock your data, um, take enough water, walk around a little bit. Don't go and sleep and don't allow your village people to call your attention out. Keep an eye on the Telegram channel. That's exactly 6 p.m. You are going to be getting the link to join me live. I'm going to be sharing a lot of value. And of course, you know, John B is going to be coming on next. You do not want to miss any of today's session. Please ask a lot of people, ask people who are not here to join us in the next session. I'll talk to you later. But before then, let us play the thank you um, video for our speed crime, just the way we do that. And um, of course, um, so that they can... Okay. So we're going to be playing the thank you video at the end of today's session, okay? So but up next is me, you know, as um, the convener.